Hi, how are you? Hope everybody's doing well. We celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, and in that, we're invited to discover our own Epiphany of the Lord. Epiphany means a sudden realization or manifestation of a great truth. And today, we ask ourselves, what truth have we discovered during this year? How many of these truths have been revealed to us in our daily lives, through our priorities, through our plans, through our relationships, our personal relationships? How did our life take a different turn or meaning during this year. In other words, what have been our epiphanies? On the Feast of the Epiphany, the revealed truth, that saw the manifestation of a very important truth, was discovering the Messiah, discovering Christ. In the readings, we see how the Magi had that experience of discovery, of search. And through them, we're invited to follow our own epiphany of the Lord. Happy are those who can perceive, who are awake, to the signs and manifestations of the Lord in their lives. And even more, happy are those who allow themselves to be guided by those signs. The Feast of the Epiphany, or how I grew up calling it, the Feast of the Three Holy Kings, <laughs> has always been close to my heart. As a child, I always look forward to that feast for the coming of our three kings, Baltasar, Mechor, y Gaspar. And their gifts, I must admit. <laughs> As a believer, this holiday adds universality and profoundness to the event of the birth of our Lord and salvation itself. We use language like from far lands, from the East. Let us, and those phrases let us know that salvation is for all of us, no matter from which part of this planet we are from or we were born, or in which cool culture we were raised we can all discover Christ and follow him. It also adds a sense of inclusiveness. Salvation is for everyone, no matter how we are, who we are, how we feel. If any of these elements of our reality, of who we are, how we are, and how we feel, make us feel like we are from far away lands, from distance. Today we are invited to find our way to reconnect and make sense of our life again. We are invited to connect to God with our reality and for that we have the entire creation. The Creator works draws near, and that's God himself. And all creation conspires for our salvation. And it conspires by sending us signals, messages, trying to get our attention constantly. On the epiphany of the Lord, the three wise men from, from Far East, we're guided by a star in the sky. 
a star in the sky caught their attention. This year, we had a similar event when Jupiter and Saturn aligned. And I must admit, the pictures I seen, the photos that some people took of these events, they look pretty much like the Bethlehem star. And what it matters is the sign. What if instead of a star, there were two planets aligned? What is really important is that someone was looking at the sky, in love with the sky, and saw something different. They were paying attention. By doing what they loved. And by doing so, they knew that something different, something special was happening. When we observe something for enough time, we understand and we notice the subtle changes we discover new things, new signals, new messages. And it happens with us, with the events, with things, and even with other people. Everything that we pay attention inspire us to discover some truth. How God speaks to us and communicates with us through what we are passionate about, through what we study, through what we work at, through what we love. And all that is part of God's work. God uses his own creation to communicate with us, to connect with us. Everything in creation has its purpose and tells us the truth about who God is. We all have different starting points. And that's great. It gives us variety. Perhaps for some is art and music, from others medicine or science, for others psychology or sociology, for others studies of education, politics, government, or perhaps sports and physical activity. But any route that we choose could lead us to a sudden realization, a sudden discovery of a truth, our own epiphany, our own encounter with God himself. This year, God has truly spoken to all of us. It's impossible not to pay attention to what is going on. It touches all of us, it affects all of us. Even if that is so, for each of us is a different experience. Just listening to others, we recognize that we experience things in a different manner, that there is variety on each person's epiphanies. Some have a close encounter with God through raising their children, others by fighting an illness, others by going through difficulties in life. And through all this, they discover those messages, those connections, those divine coincidences of their daily lives that remind them that God is there with them. In the midst of all this, there is beauty to be found. And there's a beautiful constant consistency. Is that 
Like the Magi from the East, we also could follow signs and signals. That we are also invited to have our own moments of revelation, of epiphany. Every time I love to hear faith uh, stories and every time I hear somebody that is talking about their faith, um, they always mention a moment, a sign, a message, something that strikes them, a person or an event that inspires them, that allow them to let themselves be guided and at the same time to find what they were looking for. Most of us want an encounter with God as well. One-on-one uh, -on -one with Him in our lives. Likewise, the Magi found the manger and inside the manger, baby Jesus in the arms of Mary and Joseph. And they were certain that in that moment, they found what they were looking for. So the Feast of our Epiphany <laughs> invite us to pay attention to what we passionately love, what we do, what we live. Because precisely through those moments, we will discover our own path to the Epiphany of the Lord. May God bless you all and let us be saints.